late January, four weeks to launch. We were working around the clock, testing system by system. We were going very fast. NASA were behind schedule as always. And we were running tests without taking time to really look at the data. The last check was called the plugs out test, a full dress rehearsal for launch. It was a Friday at the end of an awfully long week and we were tired. We all had our eyes on the weekend. In the morning when the crew came in to the office, you know, you, I sensed something. I don't know what it was that I sensed, but I picked up something from all three of them. There was a quietness about them. Instead of being ready for a test where they usually just get up and bounce out the door, it was just, it, it was something they didn't want to do. Their attitude was 180 from anything I've ever seen before. It would be actual flight conditions. Crew in full suits, capsule under its own power. 100% oxygen inside, and the hatch sealed. It's not a normal workday. You know, you stayed there till the test was done, which meant that you might be in that spacecraft 18, 20 hours. It was a long, arduous test. This one was no different. We'd been going since six in the morning. I said to Gus, if it doesn't check out well, if you have a glitch or an anomaly, get the hell out of there. Hell, he wasn't going to do that. That would have brought the program to a stop and everybody said, well, that chicken shit guy and, and all that kind of stuff. You've got a cast of thousands geared up to perform a test and you're critical to that test and here you are, you've worked all day long and you're down to the last half hour, last hour. It's very difficult to just say, hey, I'm putting everything to a stop here. I was in the blockhouse with Stu Russo late Friday afternoon. We had some communication problems. We were having trouble. We were testing out the various uh, loops and, and radios. Okay, uh, we're ready to pick up, Chuck, but all I can do is give it a try. You copy? No, I don't read you at all, Chuck. You want to try the farm? Hey guys, how are we going to get to the moon if we can't talk between two buildings? I can't hear a thing you're saying. Uh, did you guys say something from the command module? I said, how are we going to get to the moon if we can't talk between two buildings? The test was dragging on, one glitch after another. Most of us had already called to say we wouldn't be home for dinner. And then it happened. Down under Gus's seat, somewhere in 30 miles of wire, there was a short circuit. In the blockhouse, all we saw was another glitch on the meter. Nobody knew it then, but a spark had jumped out. It landed and sat there, in the pure oxygen. At 15 pounds pressure, it glowed. Brighter and brighter. And then it went. Like a blowtorch. called for medics and raced over to the pad. The radio was dead, but I still hadn't given up on the crew. In their suits, I figured maybe they still had a chance. 
bad guys were burning their hands trying to get the damn hatch off, choking in toxic smoke. Almost as fast as it started, the fire was out. Finally, they got the hatch off, and then we knew. Most of their suits were still white. Uh, you did not look in and see charred bodies. We always expected to lose someone, someday, but not on the ground. That was not a way to die, not for a test pilot. The moon that had seemed so close now had vanished from sight. <laughs> 